ccva.org/quiz. All right, now the lead generation part. On this, you'll have to make a decision. Will you force an opt-in page on someone to get the results of their quiz or make this part optional? My experience, and I've consulted with some quiz pros on this, is that you will provide a better experience and get better quality leads by allowing people to skip the opt-in. And I know that's blasphemous to a lot of email marketers, but the thing is you do get a lot of people that'll just blast through and they don't care a thing about you and then eat up your time and, and so forth. And they never look at their emails or open them ever again. So having a higher quality person is uh, important. So by letting them skip, you get less leads, but they are much higher quality because the person really wanted to get the incentive you promised them for opting in. And of course, your quote, ethical bribe or whatever you're promising them for signing up should be related to your product or service. Now, your email autoresponder program can be hooked up to the opt-in form to put them in your database and start them in an autoresponder series. We covered all this stuff in other episodes. Now, most quiz experts will tell you to display the form after the last question of your quiz because people are more invested in the quiz if they've gotten to that point and are more likely to fill in the form. Now, you can expect much higher opt-in rates with quizzes than a basic form on your website, which can be really low, like 2% or less. In the first couple days, I've been getting a 17% opt-in rate. And good rates for quizzes can go from 10 to 35%. And now that I have some figures to work with, I will start making slight changes to the form and the quiz and the freebies that I offer to increase that rate. 